Welcome hey. back. I'm back. <laughs> you, you've made, I just looked at the chat. You've made some people very happy. Oh, so. thank you, guys. You have thank fans. Thank you. Welcome to Dish and Days, everybody. It's Sunday, December 5th. I'm so happy to be back after a month off for filming slash holidays. You guys are really lucky. I almost didn't make it back. I got sick this past week, and I was telling the guys right now, guys, I'm vertical. I'm so happy to be vertical. She's upright, people. I'm upright. I got very, very, very sick this past week, uh, a few days ago. So I'm upright. I'm good. Happy to be back, uh, and so happy. I, I, I was so. I, let me tell you how sick I was. I was so sick that like I couldn't even process days. I was trying to wash, and I was uh, like, I, I can't. Yeah. Luckily, there wasn't much to process this week. <laughs> oh. oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, God. At least from my from from where I was watching. Yeah. I, thought it was it, I thought it was interesting. It, it, let me, it was enough for me to process anyways. I was like, oh, good. I don't have to. Oh, it was nothing. a light week. Yeah. Nothing that gets my heart rate up. It got my heart rate up. I was like, oh, my God. I'm going to have to call sick. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, she's our Sally. I'm Rosalie. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and who is that to my other direction? Hey guys, Justin Harold here. And down here. And me, Michael Mattis. Yes. <laughs> and Tony <laughs> is away. He is off working, being a mogul. Tony's yes. a working woman today. Yes. Good for her. I'm yes. sure he will share <laughs> all his. Um, yeah, great stuff he's working on soon. Oh, I think he's having fun. I, I yeah. told him he would have mm -hmm. fun, but just to bring snacks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what they don't tell you about fun. working in Hollywood. Like, you, you need to they know. They don't feed you, yeah. Yeah, you need to know which events do and don't have yes. food. This is a necessity <laughs> going in because if they don't bring out snacks. Remember that one year Tiffany Haddish brought fried chicken to the Met Gala? <laughs> did I she? I never was, heard that. Yeah, I thought that was the smartest thing she ever did. Uh, uh, mm. It's the yeah. smartest thing uh, many people, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, bravo. That's the way Gotta to do keep it. Gotta keep people right. fed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what did I, so I, Michael has already said what he thought about this week. Um, <laughs> before we do that, follow us on social media, Dish and Days Show on Facebook, add Dish and Days on Instagram, and underscore Dish, Dish and Days on Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> Most of you already are here now. I know a few people follow, uh, do us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. And buy our merch, <laughs> Dish and Days .threadlist .com. It's the holiday season, yes. guys. It is. What Give your presents. Gifts. Give us for your gifts. Yeah, yes. Well, not us. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What greater gift? Well, listen, for the right price, we'll show up. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Justin. <laughs> Everyone, can, you can have Justin Harold for the reasonable price of uh, whatever he decides. How dare you put it out? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no, and then also uh, you can find us on uh, all podcast networks, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, you can yes. listen to us wherever you are. If you want to listen to us while you're driving, great. Mm -hmm. Or jogging or doing whatever. Walking the dog. Traffic. In traffic. We're a good traffic boredom killer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah. So Michael's already said what he thought of this week. Justin, what did you think of this week? I liked it. I, there wasn't a ton that happened, but I loved the interactions we got with people. I loved seeing like old people come back. I liked. I also liked the conversations we had with certain people. I felt like some stuff was revealed, and I always love. You know, I always love uh, a bringing of the past forward and sort of relating it to what's going on. I thought they did a good amount of that this this week. So yeah, yeah. I was happy with it. I mean, we did get some good convos, but overall, there was no, no nothing major happened this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is fine. We've had a good couple of weeks. Like weeks. Even last week, I felt was good. I mean, last week yeah, was yeah, last week was good. We didn't do a show last week to yeah. to recap it, but the yeah. the yeah. whole reveal of Marlena being possessed again, yes, uh, and throwing Sean over the table at Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner. That was Sean. Sean. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. We have a new curve like, from that, that scene, by the way. Yeah. Oh, it's so <laughs> funny to look at, like, the stunt double and then, like, look at Brandon. <laughs> Is it, no, um, Brandon. No. Brandon, yeah. Brandon, yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
but no, it was yeah, like, the stunt oh, double had to be sure to have yeah. his face down and the whole time. <laughs> I was like, Sean gained like twenty pounds in between from the table to the floor. <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. well, it was Thanksgiving. <laughs> I think I put on a few pounds last week. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I hope no, it was a good, had a good weeks. holiday. I hope everybody had a better Thanksgiving dinner than Doug and Julie. Uh, yeah. But I mean, what's Thanksgiving without some family trauma? Yeah. <laughs> Whether oh, it's yeah. you know, <laughs> we've all been there. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right, and without further ado, it is time to start. Dish and days. Dish and days. Oh, <laughs> Imagine the hourglass. <laughs> oh, that's right. Tony has all the props. Yeah. He's got all the props. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, well, we'll start with the biggest storyline, which would be uh, the devil has revealed itself in Salem, uh, possessing Marlena, and we see the consequences to John, Ben, Sierra, um, Paulina, and Steve are kind of in there. And then we had a surprise um, appearance mm-hmm. by yeah. an angel. I don't know. We're, let's, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna get into that. So let's start with. Um, so now everybody knows. Mm-hmm. Information mm-hmm. is spreading fast. Yeah. To everybody out there, and I'm glad that not fast kind of, enough. Not fast to two enough. people in particular. <laughs> not fast enough to two people in Including the girl whose brother was thrown across the table by the yeah, devil. Right. <laughs> no yeah. text. No text to Sierra being like heads up. That kind yeah, of. That was- I'm like. No yeah. one's gonna either of them. No one texted either of them. Considering how hey. close Marlena is to exactly. Ben, yeah, yeah, it was a big red flag of like, oh, would it? Even if it was just Sean, like not gossiping, but even if it was just like, oh my god, like this is happening, kind of a thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The devil threw me over a table, but I'm okay. Yeah. The devil's in Marlena. She kicked my ass, but I'm okay. That's all yeah. she. All he had to say. Yeah. And actually, I'm surprised at this point that John hasn't figured out because he's trying to figure out what the devil would do. Mm-hmm. Um, and he doesn't need, I don't need to, I don't think he would necessarily figure out what the devil wants to do yet. Mm-hmm. But who could the devil possibly reached out to, tricked, be hiding, etc.? Yeah. Um, ben would kind of be an obvious choice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't make sense that neither of them would get some kind of heads up or that it no one would figure it out yet, but it doesn't fit the storyline right now. So yeah. they she convinced Ben and Sierra to go on the run, and in usual soap fashion, the man's being stupid, the girl's being the one being like, I'm not sure about this, mm-hmm. but she went along with it anyway. And they ended up at the cabin again. Days okay. of Our Lives has never gotten more use out of a set more than that cabin. <laughs> Which is, like, the worst place to hide because immediately if, like, whenever you want to find Ben and Sierra, they're not at home. They're at the cabin. I mean, like, where would you go? Right. And so, like, they're trying to hide out, but they go to the cabin where yeah. everybody knows they go. <laughs> so Yeah. And I kind of want the name of Ben's contractor because that place was burned this down great now. two, yeah. three times. <laughs> yeah. And it looks fantastic. So who is his contractor? Yeah, exactly. Like, I think he threw out a comment last time that they were there that he did it all himself. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I was sort of, like, really caught up in the whole, like, John's abusing me. Like, at first when she got there, I was like, how are they going to do this? And when she said it, I like, right before she said it, I was like, oh, is she going to say, like, John's physically hurting her? And I, I kind of thought that's where she would go. And then when mm-hmm. then when or the devil did it, it made me cringe. But I, I part of me, I don't say I like the execution of it, but at least, at least they tied it back to the aneurysm thing, which was a kind of helping mm-hmm. And a little bit of it, because I felt like Sierra was kind of like, what are you talking about? And then Mel was like, oh, yeah, I do remember when, you know, this was a thing and this was kind of public knowledge. He was, you know, had a temper and it was going a little crazy and blah, blah, blah. So that part of it, I won't say I liked, but at least it made somewhat sense. But I will say it part of me was like, uh, it was a little cringe for me. I don't know about you guys. It just, it, I'm like, who would be like, I... <sighs> Again, Ben was kind of more on the side of believing it. Yeah. Even and and even Sierra with whenever when 
what we thought was John, like came yeah. to the door and was like, let me in, let yeah. me in. And then it turned around and it was actually yeah. Lee Devil. Mm-hmm. Even after that, there's still this twinge of uncertainty with Sierra. Like, I, like she just can't imagine it. And Ben, you know, who hasn't jo- known John as long, you know, just kind of bought it. Yeah. Um, but even that, I'm like, this is John Black. Like, I, it can't be that easily believed. You know, I don't know. You know what it is? I, I don't, I don't know that he, it's, th- sometimes there's a weird, when, when someone is a victim of abuse or molestation or anything like that, some, there's, sometimes there's like this weird disconnect where you can believe that this person has been a victim and or is in danger but there's a strange disconnect where you believe that, but your mind is not processing that a person that you know did this to them. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Where it's like, I, 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 if you were to ask Ben straight out, does he believe it? I think, and I think he's answering that quite well. He's just like, well, we heard it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that he believes in his soul that this is who John is, but there's a disconnect happening where it's like, mm-hmm. well, do I believe what I'm hearing and right. what this person, and he trusts Mar. there is no one he trusts more than Marlena. Apart from Sierra, yeah. there is no one he trusts more than Marlena. So, of course, he can't not dispute it. He and also with his right. own, so, also with that. his own past and his own history, I think he's the perfect person to believe it. I mean, like, you know, something's wrong with John's brain and it's making him go a little crazy. I mean, that's, you know, that's his story, you know, mm-hmm. slightly different. But yeah, I were you guys fooled? I was fooled the first time and I thought maybe they were going to go this direction of when John was banging on the door, at least for the first mm-hmm. like round. I was like, oh, OK, they're doing the whole like he's angry. He's trying to warn them. So like he's banging forcefully. And then as it went on, I was like, wait, something's not right. And like, it took me a minute yeah. before I got like, oh, it's the devil disguised. Like, it, that took me a minute, actually. I did like sort of fall it for was, it. Thing of like, wait, what's going on here? It was spoiled for me before I got a chance to watch the episode. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah, because yeah, someone put it, someone had a gif on Twitter of Drake <laughs> turning into Deidre. So I was oh, like, okay. I was like, yeah. okay, well, now I know, you know, yeah. no surprise there for me. But, Sorry. you know, that's my... It's like I either I, do I go on Twitter or do I stay off of Twitter? Yeah, and, you yeah, know. You I mean, that was pretty convincing. I mean, that was a pretty convincing job. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> just from an outsider not knowing what's going on to hear John banging on your door like that. I mean, that would be mm-hmm. like okay, it's like something's going on here. It Even if I nice can't in- intellectualize it, like some, you know, something bad is happening here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the way that it was, uh, the way that it was pieced together, actually, it was a nice little bait and switch. If you were not on Twitter, yeah, if you didn't get, if you didn't get spoiled mm-hmm. first, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, then they're in the cabin, mm-hmm. and we get a little callback again. I was not watching in the yeah. original mm-hmm. incarnation. Who remembers Gabriel? Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Michael Mattis, you're the expert. What do we remember about this? Person? I don't know if I'm an expert. No, he was part of the Possession 1.0. Yeah. Um, he was kind of John's literal, like, guardian angel, so to speak, character mm-hmm. during mm-hmm. the Possession and the Execution that, that kind of, gui- I guess I would say he guided, from what I remember, guided, guided John through what he needed to do to help Marlena or help get the devil exercised and i can't remember if he was an if gabriel was an actual person or just like a figment because this time he's an actual person okay um no because i think i did wasn't he disguising himself as a homeless person i think Is that yes like exactly the, you're right thing by the pier i think that's when they first met i think yeah you remember it yeah and i don't like he, it was it was a good nice callback because in the original he did it also he wasn't like directly involved it was more like mm-hmm. it was like john's spiritual kind of guardian angel slash advisor so he, there weren't i don't think there were i don't know if there were any scenes with him in the actual marlena slash devil back then i think it was just from john's point of view having someone in his corner sort of like pushing him and guiding him there um yes. but yes yeah, so and this is the door opened i <laughs> was like wait is that and then like it clicked. I was like oh wow they brought that they brought the in the same actor too which was nice yeah. I needed a reminder. I needed a reminder. Yeah, it was the same actor who yeah. 
but they didn't do any like flashbacks to the last. No, time. I so, thought, yeah. So maybe he. So maybe, maybe Gabriel and Marlena didn't have um, any yeah, they interaction. Didn't have any. But now I can't remember, did John mention him? Because when he was talking about the possession and how he was able to, to handle it before, he mentioned Father Francis. No, he, he said Gabriel. Gabriel. He mentioned Gabriel. So yeah, they could have done a flashback with them, but... That, I was waiting for that. Maybe they're saving it for some for mm-hmm. this week, maybe. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's yeah. the same guy. It's the same actor who played him, yeah. And from so, the pictures, I re- from what I remember, the guy looks exactly the same 25 yeah, does, years later. Yeah. What's he drinking? <laughs> Where's that water coming from? And yeah. so um, I'm not sure how much they're pulling actually from the Bible or from actual exorcisms, but I guess the, the what they're going with now is that while Gabriel can be, I guess, an angel on earth and look over everyone, he cannot interfere yeah. with mm-hmm. whatever is going to happen. Yeah, and that I think that was his role the last time too as well. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Okay. He wasn't involved with it, but he was... You know, he wasn't involved with the exorcism, but he was there for it. Yeah. So to speak. Okay. Yeah. All right. It kind of begs the question, though. There's no one really open to listen right now. Uh, So is he just there for, like, protection for Ben and Sierra until someone can get to them? I think he said for the baby, he said. When he was doing his, like, telepathic thing with with Mardevil, which I thought (laughs) was kind of cool. Yeah. Although Deidre and those stairs... Like she, uh, she's just been a complete rock star during this whole storyline. Her facial, her yeah. facial acting, those, her those emoting. Those ways to him and like, yeah, they were great. But yeah, I think he said something about like, I'm here to protect the baby or God's not going to let you hurt the baby or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Um, anyone notice how Ben was making the peanut butter sandwich with the peanut butter? He was like. Oh yeah, you know, you, you you take peanut butter and spread it, but he was like, I don't know if the oil had congealed on the top or I, that's whatever. What I was he was like, <laughs> he was like no, churning no. the peanut butter. I was we like, that's weird. But then I remembered, I'm like, head. oh, maybe the oil came to the top and he had to, you know, do the churning thing. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what a sad lunch. I I, I for so I got focused on the lunch. Maybe I don't know what that says about the episode. I was enjoying the episode. Butter. <laughs> but it was like, oh, stay for lunch. And I was like, okay, they packed, they brought some food. I was like, okay. And then he's like, this is like lunch meat or we got peanut butter. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, like, all right. They're <laughs> um, on the run. What do you want them to bring? A cookie? Well, they obviously stopped at the supermarket, I'm guessing. So, like, they you know, at Costco or something. Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> they could have stopped at Popeyes on the way out of town. Maybe they don't get have you, a big enough refrigerator. Get Maybe your DoorDash or something. You yeah. know what? They, they they missed out because Price Town wasn't open. <laughs> because they, they, you know, Price Town couldn't open, so they were oh limited. Oh, God. Uh, Annette Thompson had a question about whether Belle was born during the last possession, and yes, she was. Yes, she had to have been, yeah. She had been born because Sammy had kidnapped Belle before the possession. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, yeah that's just pretty much... Yeah, because this the affair that produced Belle, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Another but... thing that made Marlena susceptible to the devil, the yeah. fact that she cheated yeah. on her husband and ruined her family, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but again, Belle was a baby when all yeah. of this mm-hmm. was going on. Yeah. So I yes. was, like I've been saying, we need the adults in the room who yeah. were there to start yeah. figuring out what was going on. Like yeah. Abe was late to the party. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, like the fact, like Pauline, the fact that Paulina had to inform him, mm. and I, I cracked <laughs> up when she said, "I danced with the devil and lived to tell the tale." Spot you on. called the devil a bitch. Oh, and she I- called me one right back. <laughs> oh, I love that scene with her and John. I love them together. I I like mixing her up with the rest of the cast. I feel like mm-hmm. they they've segmented Jack Hay a little bit too much, and like get her out there with the rest of the cast. I love her with John. Mm-hmm. That was a really it was so in, it was just an interesting sort of take for him to sort of like with everything that was going on. He was like, mm-hmm. "Listen, let me like try and help you mend this a little bit." And the sort of history lesson with Lexi. Now, what do you, mm. I was thinking this when I was watching it. Do you think it was a little out of turn for John to sort of go into Lexi's history, or do you think he was sort of in the right spirit of of wanting to like his in, give Paul his, comfort? His intention was to like basically say, "Oh, if Abe can forgive Lexi for what yeah. she did, he can forgive you for what you did." Yeah. That was the intention. So I don't think it was. Um, wrong of of, yeah. of him and i mean maybe like 
you know, saying like, oh, you know, just poking a little bit that, oh, Lexi was the love of his life, you know, mm-hmm. maybe Pauline is, I, if I were Pauline, well, yeah, she knows that, but I wouldn't want to hear it like all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but well, no, I don't, I, mean, I don't think, I think his intention was, was good. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, the thing is that, and that's the whole, I think that's the whole arc of this is that John is the all around good guy in this mm-hmm. thing. But the one thing he's no longer, unfortunately, is a priest. Yeah. <laughs> so it comes right and back he technically around wasn't, to, like, let's just find her. Yeah. And he technically wasn't really a priest last time, right? And I think they, that they, he they rewrote that. that up. Yeah. Yeah, he and it's like maybe the possession up. didn't take fully. Yeah. Yeah, so then it's kind of... It, it, it was a partial possession, repos- yeah. uh, partial exorcism. So, of course, Steve is asking him, well, like, well, like how, how do we do this? What do we do? And he's like, I don't know. We just need to find her. Mm-hmm. We can't even yeah. like. I know that we're. I know that you want to skip to you know doing something, but we can't actually do anything. I know we don't have a plan, but we can't actually do anything until we find her. Mm-hmm. Put the cart before the horse. Much. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I agree with Annette, who just you just put that up, Michael. That yeah, I'm glad that he didn't. I I thought it was okay that he was sort of giving Paulina a little like encouragement mm-hmm. and a little like understanding, and I like that he did it. I think he was being tactful and not sort of revealing the things Lexi mm-hmm. had done. I thought he gave yeah. a nice little like overview of like, but also <laughs> part of like, me was like, possessed too? Yeah. part of me when he was like, oh, if he could forgive Lexi and I'm like, well, Lexi and he were together for decades. Like that, I think yeah. it's a little different than like, you know, it is it's a different been, situation. You guys have but... been together for like less than a year. So yeah. I don't know if I, I don't know if I would have said like, if he could forgive Lexi, he could forgive you. I thought that was a little much, but I thought it was, I thought the spirit of it was nice to be like, listen, like Lexi wasn't a saint. Abe's very forgiving, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, there might be honest. some hope there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, am I, perverted for really wanting Paulina to be in this um, in this devil storyline because I just find it like, no, like the, yeah. I just there's something about it that just is like yes like I want her to go toe to toe yeah the, the scene with her and Marlena like a few weeks ago like two weeks ago during the week we were off mm-hmm. um, when they confronted each other was, was pretty good pretty entertaining yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so, that was yeah. pretty much those are the main points of that storyline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Was that? Right, did let's we have, move on to. Uh, was Susan on last week or did, was Susan? She was on this week. She's. This week? Oh, we have her coming up. This okay. week, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about her okay. in, in a bit. Um, oh, okay, let's get through this. Uh, <laughs> my least. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and let's get it out of the way. Let's get it out of the way. All right. <laughs> little. Little. I don't even know what to say anymore. Philip, Chloe, Brady, Victor, Maggie, you guys go. Just, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, well, at least we have some movement going beyond, you know, the same formula this has been following. At least we're getting that. Do I necessarily yeah. like it? No. <laughs> I don't. Like, I know we were, we were sort of, we were chatting about this in other, other mediums, but I was like, can we just like let Philip win or like, like, I don't know if he needs to be driven completely crazy now. No. Like if he's like Mm-mm. kidnapping um, Brady and we had the violence setting like... some, setting something up, which I was like, kind of like, Oh, where's he going with this? Um, but is he like faking his murder? I'm like, I'm like, what's going on here? I don't even know. Maybe we'll find, I'm guessing we'll find out this week. I mean, it's going to be leading up to something, but they, they, they're just, they're making Philip, the antagonist of this whole storyline. Yeah. Like he's fully the antagonist. It's not Brady anymore. Um, and yeah, he, it's, uh, I just, uh, yeah. Now he's That's all. <laughs> so obsessed. Yeah, it's like the, not just I'm going to break up with Chloe or ruin Brady. It's I, if I can't, I think he even said, if I can't have her, no one can, which is like the. I know. Which is like dialogue 101 for, yeah, the crazy obsessive. Um, I mean, it makes sense to a point, given, you know, who his parents are, or who, you know, the family he's in, but it's just uh, the extreme nature, like, yeah. it goes beyond just deviousness. Now yeah. he's, you know, being violent, and like you said, kidnapping, and, and just raging, and, you know, I, 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 want, I want a more, exp- I want a further explanation than, oh, he's just jealous. Like, he's doing yeah. all this because he's jealous. Yeah. Like, no, I need something more than that. To, to, to buy what he's doing. Like a mental illness or something. Look, I give 
I give, as a writer myself, I give a lot of leeway, a lot of leeway to writers because you, you don't know what it takes to pull some of that stuff out. But I really, really, really want an explanation as to why somebody thought this would entertain me. I am not entertained. I am beyond pissed that somebody thinks this is a good idea in 2021 to portray, and let's be honest, let's call this what it is. Philip is turning into an abusive uh, asshole. I'm sorry. He, the way that he's treated Chloe up until this point has, he, he has not treated her like a person. He has treated her like a possession. Yeah. Let's, let's call it what it is. Yeah. And he, that, that line that he threw out to Brady in a villain, we love to hate, to, we hate to, uh, hate to love kind of a way. It's a different delivery. The, The way that it's is right now. I just hate, hate it. Yeah, I hate hate it so much because the uh, I just oh God I I I've I've I've, I've, I've said everything I've said everything that needs to be said about this mm-hmm. I don't know how many more ways I can say that this is terrible Yeah, yeah. I mean I just ugh. people a lot of people are comparing. Um, Philip to Peter Blake. That's a good comparison, actually. Yeah, when Peter was sort of ending the show, he was sort of crazy about Jennifer and Mm -hmm. Jack keeping them apart. And yeah, that's actually yeah, he's yeah, very Peter Blake. Very Peter Blake. I don't remember Peter Blake being like, like, like the psycho. You know, he was devious, and he, you know, I think towards the end, he tried to kill Jack. And then he may have even thought about killing Jennifer. Like, yeah, at the end, there no, he didn't. He, I don't think he tried to kill Jack. He was trying to frame Jack. Remember, because Peter got they struggled for a gun. Peter got shot and died, and then framed Jack for it. That's right. Oh yeah, when Peter faked his death in the Mm -hmm. I remember in the coffin and like got up after everyone left. Then poor Laura Horton. Poor Laura Horton. Oh man. And then that whole year and a half of story that. Yeah. 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 It was jungle uh, madness, people, not jungle fever. Peter yeah, had jungle that's madness. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, never yeah, but that. you see what I mean about how like yeah. there are villains that we love to hate, and we have seen good guys go or good guys go down the psycho rabbit hole, um, Ben included. But to mm-hmm. me, that had a larger point to it. You yeah. know, I felt like when Ben went psycho. He, it, you know, we had a mystery to it. Mm-hmm. We had yeah. um, an arc to it. Mm-hmm. We had mental illness involved, you know, yeah. and the one thing that we almost didn't forgive, which was the killing of Will, they course corrected that. Mm. Um, and it, it just, it just it had, it had, you know, it had story. It had a point. It had an arc. Yeah. yeah. This mm-hmm. I don't. I don't get the point. Right. Yeah. Part. Funny thing. Part of me even thought like there was going to be a fake out when they did the whole like Maggie and Victor talking, and Victor was like, "Oh, you know, a jealous man. You know, a a, a man is dangerous if he's driven by jealousy." And then they showed the next clip of Brady getting hit over the head, and part of me thought like, "Oh, they're going to do a fake out, and everyone mm. thinks it's Philip." But it'll be something else, and maybe that's where this story is going. I was like, oh, maybe that's like the twist here. And then they yeah. came right back, and it was Philip, and I was like, oh, okay. Like again, like- ag- again, I was kind of relieved that it was Philip because I'm like, okay, finally we get some movement and maybe okay. some possible closure to this storyline oh. coming soon. That's why I was kind of relieved. I was like, okay, yeah. finally, like Philip's actually doing something instead of just being an obnoxious boob about it. Mm-hmm. And then we're finally going to get some closure to it, hopefully soon. So yeah. we'll see. <laughs> but Maggie and Victor were. In- I just, I oh. guys, I you know I feel about Victor. I used to love Victor, and I'll say this mm-hmm. again: they just they take all the nuance out of him. I felt like, and this is what I mean when I said before about it's he's just now like he's become a caricature of himself who just screams obscenities mostly about women calls and people like, whores calls women yeah, whores, yeah. it's we're, <laughs> he's been calling chloe a whore and a slut for almost 20 years now and it's mm-hmm. like let's get something else going you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. like if it's not chloe it's nicole if it's not nicole it's bonnie 
if it's not them it's somebody else who you know mostly a woman let's be real i need i need something else from victor i don't the crotchety sort of old man that because we all love victor 30 years ago it just doesn't work for me anymore and i think because they keep him that way it makes the despair it shows the huge disparity between him and maggie now it's like she's coming in sort of like let's you know let's put everything together and let's be good and save people and then it's like okay well why are you with him again like mm -hmm. when you got together i i understood it and that storyline was really interesting it made sense it was kind of out of nowhere and like oh cool i'm i'm in support of this relationship and you have two older cast members and two older characters coming together like okay i would have never put them together but it works now it's just like for me it just reads as two older people that they're putting in a scene together as opposed to a husband and wife who get along and it's it's maggie again and i think they even referenced that where it was like she said something like i don't know they mentioned the fact of like she's always on him she about puts up she there. basically puts yeah, up with it and is always trying like, to yeah. keep him on the straight yeah i just i it need some more nuance there i don't know i just as as old as this triangle is of brady chloe phillip Victor's reaction to it is the same as it was 20 years ago, too. Mm -hmm. like, he yeah. still is blaming Chloe for coming in between them. It's, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I just, I need something more with, with with him and them. I think they, and I think John Aniston is still great. I think mm -hmm. he oh, can yeah. play nuance. You just have to write it for him and give it to him. And I'm not saying, like, he needs to, like, embrace Chloe or whatever, but I feel like something different needs to happen with this character or just... It's Jen lather rich Jen Lily, come back. <laughs> that that was yeah, was that that yeah, he hated and then he kind of softened to Teresa. Is that the last person he softened to before? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, just so, saying. Yeah. yeah. Jen Lily, come back. I know she's off she's expecting her fourth child. I'm yeah. not gonna yeah. put too much pressure on her, but mm -hmm. God, please come back. Yeah, I, I, I just, yeah. I, I mean, can't take this anymore. I I'm hoping this goes somewhere interesting. I think we've we've sort of explored as far as we can go with this triangle now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, there needs to be some closure to it. And I think yeah, that's finally what we're going to be getting to. And Hopefully, I hope yeah. this closure involves showing Philip the door. Mm. Ouch. I can, no, but I Like, can't, from the show, I, or... Uh, or just from the store of, like... I, I, Chloe. I don't, I don't Chloe want to say the show the because I don't want to say that to J.K. Johnson because I, 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 yeah. I think oh, he's a great, great actor. Yeah. But my God, please give him something else. This is, yeah. I, I can't, I can't with this anymore. I really can't. They can give, they, they could have done better with him. This, yeah. like ever since he came back. I he's, just, yeah. for sure. I, uh, yeah. I can't, I can't anymore. Okay, so. Justin let's... and his giant glass of water. <laughs> I, I don't understand why it looks it's like. It's a regular a, glass. It just, well. <laughs> Let me let me stop this the perspective where it goes where it goes theory. other places. It's, <laughs> it's an above average glass of water. Oh, above average. Okay, <laughs> heard that before. Moving on. Yeah. Moving Haven't on. We Haven't we all? Haven't we all? Mercifully moving on from this disaster. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, this is actually interesting because we actually got some movement um, on several fronts on this storyline. Uh, Xander, Gwen, mm -hmm. Ava, Kristen, Rafe, and peripherally Susan, uh, who did not have any idea that she was actually providing a key piece of information this yeah. week, a week. You um, know, I needed that reminder because as I was yeah. watching it, you know, I was like, Xander's bringing Susan flowers. Why? Yeah, I can, but then even she, like, that. she was, th she was saying it as I was thinking it. Yeah. He was like, well, I have to thank you for what you did. And he's like, she's like... Oh, I don't have to do anything for you. <laughs> and then he, um, you know, and I was then, she, I was like, oh, that's right, because I had, I'd forgotten about when Kristen and Susan switched places, yeah. and Susan was in jail because she was promised a Sunday bar. Yeah. That part I remembered. <laughs> she was promised a Sunday bar and that's did not get it. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> I, I can't say I would have said no to a Sunday bar either, but um, but yeah, and so now Xander. We're starting to get movement with Xander and yeah. and him thinking like what he was told about Sarah may not have been the God's honest truth. 
Yeah, I completely forgot about that too. I yeah, it took me a minute to be like, wait, what's the connection here? What are what is he thanking her for? I think it was because it was during the, the when we were, when when Kristen was in the mask phase and had masks for everybody, yeah. and I think we were just like, oh my god, this is so. Yeah. We probably blocked it out of our minds because <laughs> it was ridiculous, and now yeah. now they're taking parts things that happened during that storyline and kind of bringing them back to the yeah. forefront to yeah. to to make some story. So. Yeah. It was actually very nice of Xander to bring Susan flowers. Yeah, I that was, that was yeah. Really nice of him. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, but yeah, I was confused about why, but then it all made sense after that. So now Xander's all kinds of confused. And so he went straight to the source. He went to Kristen. Yeah. Uh... And he's still, <laughs> he's still slightly suspicious. I think he's mm-hmm. still like, there's something here I need, just need to yeah. kind of pull on this thread I mean, a little bit. He knows Kristen's lying. I don't oh, think yeah. he would ever... I mean, I, I, why would he ever think that Gwen would lie to him? Because she's been truthful about every terrible thing she's done. Of course he would, wouldn't believe that she would lie to him. He mm-hmm. wouldn't have a clue. I, what was Kristen's... I'm trying to remember that... What was Kristen's explanation <laughs> to Xander... She oh, she said she it. was just toying with him. Right. Yeah. 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 She didn't, yeah. Yeah, and then the van came and, yeah. We the van Backstreet, came with the Backstreet, Backstreet Boys. Boy. The Backstreet Boy van. <laughs> That's okay, kind of cool. random. That was a random cameo. <laughs> okay, so this whole escape plan, Gwen was, I wouldn't say she was useless, but it really didn't need her. I mean, Ava came up with everything. She sort of used you know her history and her backing it was sort of like oh i guess you really didn't need gwen or i don't know it sort of lessened the threat for me the fact that like them executing the plan was like oh okay it was it was 95 percent ava yeah exactly yeah gwen wasn't needed yeah yeah, yeah. except um, i could uh, when she called her the nanny the i nanny, could actually yeah. i, I mean cute. i could actually buy that i mean because like how many lifetime movies have a like a crazy <laughs> nanny involved nanny, yeah the wrong that, man. that was a cute part. Yeah, <laughs> I could buy that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Someone yeah. says they should have gotten Fran Drescher to be in that scene. <laughs> 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 oh. You know, that's that would, that I actually also would buy. <laughs> oh God. Has Fran Drescher ever been on soap? No, know. but the Young and the Restless, pe- some Young and the Restless people did make a cameo on the nanny back in the day. I remember that. I Peter remember Bergman that. and a couple other folks. You know from... who else? Who else did? Um, Steve. Um, 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 oh, Stephen um, Nichols. Yes, yeah, Stephen Nichols. He was on well, an episode of The Nanny. Oh, and, I and Charles now. Shaughnessy was on the entire series. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, well, duh. yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. But then Mr. I was. Sheffield. It took me a minute to remember that Stephen Nichols actually did do a guest spot. Um, he was a sleazeball in that episode. Mm. Yeah, it's a good episode. Yeah, so yeah, why doesn't Fran Drescher make an appearance? <laughs> That'd be amazing. Um, that would be fantastic. No, so for this, Chris. Okay, so they convince the guards. We don't really know where Kristen is going. Yeah, but yeah. then what happened but to she's... the guards? That's my question. So they, they sort of brushed the... that off. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they convince the guards. Eli goes back to Lonnie, tells her that Kristen has escaped, but then he tells her that the van has just vanished. So then where are the guards that go with this van? She probably paid them off, maybe. Gave them some money to disappear for a while. Or or staged a knockout or something to make it look... You know, she's... You know, whatever. I guess. Yeah. Some people in the chat room, going back one storyline, think Philip is possessed. Oh, I don't think so. I don't no. think so either. <laughs> I feel like we, they, would hit, they would tip their hat a little bit if... if he was right. Plus, yeah, I don't think it can be. He's already possessed Marlena, so I don't no. think the devil can possess two people at the same time. I buy brain tumor before I buy possession with him. <laughs> yeah, he needs to be sick. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, going back to Kristen, um, what was it? Oh, the scene between her and Lonnie. They kind of yeah. revisited their friendship um, after a while, and um, you know, you got it, it's it's so because you get so frustrated with Kristen, but then you see how she is with her friends, and she's yeah. so supportive and so nurturing, and and uh, you know, it's like which point. to a point, yeah. But and it's like okay, so which Kristen do we want? Do we want that nurturing, sensitive Kristen, or do we want the one who just threatens and does nasty shit? Well, we I'm, say, I'm always torn. Well, we say friends, 
but let's be honest, this is only Lonnie she's like this with because Ava was her friend and look how quickly she turned Well, now she's her. blackmailing her, yeah. yeah. But I don't think she would do that to Lonnie. I don't ever yeah, think she would right. do that yeah, to Lonnie. Yeah, but no, to She wouldn't blackmail. Point, she, may, she may, you know, take advantage of Lonnie's friendship, which I think she kind of already has, but she would never blackmail or, no. or threaten Lonnie. I feel like their friendship is is, like... Kristen legit thinks of her as like her only friend. Yeah. And we have this, we've had a history of this with, when it was with Billy and Jennifer. Like, I think those are the other people. Well, maybe not Billy now because <laughs> from beyond Salem, but that Chris, <laughs> oh, Kristen has a strong history of having good friendships before she went crazy or had a mental breakdown. But mm. this sort of reminds me of that part of her that was very like, I mean, remember Kristen was like, the goody two shoes like she was like alice horton's protege like mm -hmm. to see her trajectory in the past 25 years to well actually it was even back then in the 90s even in that mm -hmm. short like five or six years like that was a big 180 mm -hmm. yeah. yeah but yeah i think i agree with you i think i was like in like i think lonnie is her like one true friend who she wouldn't cross a certain line with like she she because that she maybe abused the friendship in terms of like she had Lonnie help her the last time. But I think she, from now that there are kids involved and Lonnie helped her once already, she knows not to involve Lonnie in her messes kind of yeah. a thing, which is nice. Yeah. Now, I don't know where Kristen has gone since then because clearly she's not with Rachel. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a couple things happening in that I think keep her very close by. One is Brady. Obviously, Brady is knocked out cold. Something's happening with him. Philip mm -hmm. is gone off the deep end completely. And, <laughs> you know, no matter how upset she is with Brady for rejecting her, she still loves slash obsessed um, with him. Yeah. She's going to come to his defense. Totally. Um, and, again, I want to see her involved in this possession because she was one of the people yeah. that was there. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see her get in that. I want to see her get in that. And I want to see her say, somebody send Rachel way out of town. Send yeah. her away. Send her away from this madness. I don't want my child anywhere near this madness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even I, I wish there was even a line there. If I, Who knows when we're going to see Kristen again or how soon or whatever. But mm -hmm. I wish there was a little bit of a line there to like, at least like let us know she knows about it or there was an mm -hmm. acknowledgement or like because she also i don't she doesn't she sort of got over her stuff with john in in marlena so i don't maybe she would be she would she could have that role again in a different way even though she's come she's such a different person than she was during the original possession storyline mm -hmm. she's also gotten over her stuff with them that she could be that i would say positive influence but maybe she could have helped like you know what i mean maybe she would have joined the fight i guess maybe i don't know so yeah it's it's sort of weird that they're keeping her out of this and but i guess maybe you know we had the stuff with eileen so maybe that's their yeah. sort of way to work around it i, I guess i, I think it's... that's separate i think that's yeah. separate i want stacy to be involved in this because yeah. she she just she needs to be she's it's not like she's not directly involved in the possession 2.0 as it is now but because of her experience with it the first time around I again I, I'd say there were like only a handful of mm -hmm. people who were there back then who were directly mm -hmm. involved who are still on the canvas now you know all the people there all, most of the people that have been involved in it um, were not a back we're not here in the 90s. Yeah. Doug and Julie mm -hmm. were gone. Um, yeah. Stephen, you Caleb, know, um, Stephen, Stephen, Caleb were not there. Mm -hmm. Belle and Sean were kids. Yeah. Uh, I think Sean was gone. There wasn't this. Oh, no. Johnny Sean wasn't was even a thought. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Boring. All of these. All of these now, like younger, the, the third generation, not even a thought. Yeah. So there's only a handful of people, and Kristen is one of them. She needs to be involved. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that could have been a way to keep her out of prison for a little while, or at least keep her in Salem. Just mm -hmm. to, maybe like John needing her or Steve, someone speaking on her behalf. <laughs> another way for like, another way for Kristen to get immunity. Immunity are, for my uh, crimes if I maybe, help John exercise the devil that, again. Maybe. Stranger stuff has happened. Than yeah, <laughs> Kristen has a yeah. way of getting herself freed from her shit. So she'll do I it still, again. 
I'm still baffled that she didn't use Sarah to get out of. I'm I. Oh, that she would be like, oh, immunity, why, and I'll tell you what Sarah is. That's what I thought. That's hmm. what I thought this whole thing was going. This whole like Gwen thing totally threw me for a loop. I. I'm like, why aren't you calling Maggie or Victor? Even though Victor hates you, you could get to him through Maggie. Mm -hmm. Why? But also, like, you have Sarah now. What was the point of all that? Like, what's the point of keeping Sarah now? Like, wouldn't you use her as a bargaining chip? Okay, well, back then, she did not mean to hurt Sarah. No. Sarah stumbled upon the truth Mm -hmm. that Kristen was um, out of prison. Yeah. And she, and that was that was totally accidental. Now yeah. I think it's her final trump card to play. Like she's holding it for she's something. Hold, she's holding really it for something. Oh, when she actually really needs good. it, absolutely needs it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Getting sent to Statesville, I think, would wouldn't would cow. I wouldn't. I mean, I would have played it then, but yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess. Yeah. So uh, before we move on to our tidbits, uh, everybody remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're already here, you already pressed that little red Mm -hmm. button. Thank you. If you haven't yet, please do. If you're watching on Facebook, move to our YouTube channel and just subscribe there as well. Follow (laughs) us on Dishon Days Show on Facebook, at Dishon Days on Instagram, and underscore Dishon Days on Twitter. And buy our merch. Buy merch! DishonDays.threadless.com. Merry Christmas to all. Or happy Hanukkah. <laughs> Although, if you order it now, it's going to be kind of a late Hanukkah present. <laughs> it'll be a New Year's present. Yes, it'll be a New Year's present. <laughs> All right. Um, tidbits. So, we kind of talked about this a little bit of this already. Uh, Lonnie, Eli, Abe, and Paulina. So, we know John gave Paulina some very sound advice based on mm-hmm. his experience with Abe. Um, but it was it, it's up to Abe and lonnie to process all of this um Mm -hmm. do we think that their you know forgiveness it'll happen eventually but do we think that they're finally processing all of this well i think they yeah they needed a moment and they were they were um you know kind of avoiding each other lonnie was avoiding you know talking to, to to abe and so they finally you know ran into each other at the at the loft and yeah i think that conversation is going to be the official start of the healing yeah. for for what happened because then after he left she was finally able to answer the phone you know her mom or um tamra tamra yeah. was um calling and she was kind of avoiding picking up but then after abe left she was able to to answer the phone and i think maybe that reassurance from abe that you know nothing's changing Nothing's going to change um, is, is the start of things kind of going going up from here. I I love their conversation. I love um, Abe using John and Roman as the example. <laughs> and I love that, like, like, for a second, where when Lonnie was sort of confused, I was like, wait, why? She? And then it dawned on me, like, she's relatively new to Salem in the school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, you wouldn't know that John was Roman 25 or 30 years ago or whatever it was. So that 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 was nice. I like it when like we have characters who don't know all the history of Salem and they're learning too. So that was kind of cool. I love the example. I love the healing for them. I thought the like picking up on on Tamara was a little early. I I feel like like you can let her sweat a little longer. Like I, I, don't know. Late. I didn't need her to forgive Tamara right then. I felt like the stuff with her and Abe was fine for me. Like. I don't know. I guess it's okay. It was. It's a little quick for me, or even camera. speak to her for me. I would have like, I'll speak to you when I, you know, I'll let you sweat a little longer before I, before I pick up your phone call. Yeah, I don't think she's forgiven, Tamra. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm glad that they brought it up because I felt like that was the missing piece in all of this. I felt like Paulina took all of the heat yeah. for mm-hmm. this. Yeah. When it was not a singular decision, no. it was a three-way decision, and Paulina had absolutely mm-hmm. nothing to do with um, the Abe of it all. Yeah. That was not her idea yeah. at all. She she was completely blindsided by that, and then once um, Tam- Tammy made that decision, it was done. And then yeah. they and then they were like, okay, I guess this is the story we're going with. Yeah. So there I was. Thought, Lonnie did mention this. Lonnie did put 
everybody on on blame for it. Paulina, Big Mama, and her, and 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 Tamara. She mentioned all three of them. So I think it, it's now she's realizing that yeah, it wasn't just Paulina, mm-hmm. and that you know it, the others were you know involved in it too. They they all played a part in it. Yeah. Do we think it's, it's just easier for her to be mad at Paulina just because Paulina's physically in Salem? I was just yeah. I was just gonna say like okay, so if she's if she's willing to like come to an understanding with Tamara and like sort of maybe see their point of view, like is this moving her closer to Paulina or are we still gonna have friction there? Like she is not gonna hang up with Tamara and then call Paulina and have a talk. And so it's like there is some dissension there where which is weird because honestly, Tamara's the one who deceived her more than Paulina did. Yeah. I think Abe I think Abe has well, Abe has issues with all of them, but I can see him being maybe more angry at Paulina. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, as far as um as far as Lonnie's concerned, yeah, she was more deceived by Tamara than anyone, even Paulina. You know, Paulina's like the fun aunt who breezes in every once in a while. Like, you know, Tamara's her mom who raised her and Yeah. Yeah. And Paulina had a good point, and she was like, you know, I, I, it was kind of like, I, my thought was, I need you to just to tell me what specifically you're mad about and what you would have had me do differently in this situation. I get the lying. It seems like I, I get everybody's angry at the lying. But it's the, asking the question of, okay, what would you have had me do differently? Would you have had... If, if Sam Paulina, so would you have had me raise you by myself and risk this guy, this abuser, coming into your life mm-hmm. and you constantly growing up afraid? Would you have had me, you know, give you to Tammy and then to and then for the Tam, but you for you to know the truth and then maybe in your teen rebellious years you want to go looking for your dad and then we start this cycle all over again or mm-hmm. would you have had the lie keep going and then tammy just to reveal the truth right then and there when they, they, instead of saying that it was abe you know at, you know at what point yeah what is it a good idea for this truth mm-hmm. to come out what what could have been done differently and i think the answer is not much mm-hmm. and paulina made that point she's like you know what would you have had me not give you this daughter to Abe? Yeah. I mean, would you rather have not have Lonnie in your life? I get that the lying was wrong, but at w- what could have been done differently? Yeah, considering yeah. you know all the facts now in the situation we were sort of dealing with. Um, yeah. Yeah. But also, like, from her, and also, I think it's one of those things you come to on a clearer head. And right now, Lonnie, her whole life is turned upside down. Like, mm-hmm. so it's like, give her, you know, give her the time. She'll hopefully come around and be able to see things a little bit more clearly with some yeah. understanding. But yeah, I mean, yeah. this and happened what? If this is still two days out or a couple days. Oh, yeah. From, yeah, of course. Of course, it's going to take time. I just always thought that it was a mistake to put all of the blame on Paulina, especially yeah. since it was Tamara who you. Yeah. brought up Abe, who pulled mm-hmm. Abe's name out. Yeah. yeah. That, that was my kind of like, eh. mm-hmm. I, I, I get you to, I get your anger to a point and that's my point. Yeah. I'm like, uh, let's, uh, that was not her. At some yeah. point, this has sort of like dawned on me too, like, especially after um, the John Paulina, how like similar, this situation is to sort of Lexi's um, situation. Mm. And I know we talked about John and Paulina talking about Lexi from Abe's standpoint, but also he also brought in the fact of like, when she found out like Stefano was her father and Mm. you have this push pull of like Lexi sort of, she lost both her parents too. She had no idea Celeste was her mother. You know, she grew up with Celeste as her aunt, like her crazy sort of fun aunt who Mm -hmm. she loved and would see every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And then finding out Stefano, you know, the crime, crime, you know, crime kingpin of the city was her father. And yeah, so it's, yeah, very, very similar. Yeah, so I wonder, I mean, yeah, I mean, we brought this up before we are we like, maybe in the new year, are we going to see the new big bad villain? Are, is Ray coming to town? Uh, are we gonna, mm-hmm. I mean, are they gonna tackle that? And how do they do that? And it, you know, I don't want to say responsible way, but 
less cringy way, I'll say. <laughs> and I will say, I mean, if they were to do that, Lonnie would be more equipped as an adult, as a right. grown woman, yeah. with a support system, mm -hmm. with a built-in support system now, than she would back then. Again, I say, you know, if somebody put in the comments, you know, would it, would it have been better to have just been, like, Lonnie know the truth, but it would be a family secret? Well maybe but family secrets you know k kids are not equipped to handle stuff mm -hmm. like that and especially not teenagers because the minute mm -hmm. that that teen rebellion hits they're just gonna be like oh i'm gonna go find this person maybe this person will support me mm -hmm. and that's Ooh. a bad yeah. idea yeah. Yeah. yeah you know that that they were they were planning for worst case scenarios basically yeah. mm -hmm. because they were in a worst case scenario situation mm -hmm. And so what do you do? You just, you do whatever it takes. You lie, mm -hmm. you cheat, you steal, you do whatever it takes to protect the child. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm interested in how, I mean, yeah, I'm interested in the dynamics here. I'm interested if, like, where this goes, because we know or we assume Lonnie is going to get closer to forgiveness with Abe Paulina. Or like Paulina, I should say. Abe is sort of on that track a little bit, I feel like. Each, as time passes, I feel like he's getting a little bit more understanding um, with Paulina's situation. And I don't know, are we going to see a reunion with them? Are we Are we going to see Lonnie sort of be the thorn in their side now if she doesn't forgive Paulina? And like, how is that going to work? How are they going to continue a relationship if Lonnie is still pissed at her and, you know, refusing to speak to her or whatever? Like, I, you know, is that the dynamic? Is Ray coming back in the future? Like, is that going to be... Like, who knows? I don't know. I'm just interested in where this is going to go now. Yeah. Yeah. What this is take? the story yeah. we need right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this this has me thoroughly mm -hmm. entertained. Yeah. And I honestly, with that said, I also need Paulina. I need them to branch her out a little bit. Like, cement her a little bit more in Salem with people. Mm -hmm. I want to see with John. I want. I actually want to see her with Katie. I want to see, like... I want to see her bring like the biz another business opportunity another you know who would understand paulina's situation kate i was gonna say i want her and kate to go yeah i could see her and kate yeah mm -hmm. kate of all people would mm -hmm. understand i uh, yeah i'd love to see them yeah i just i need i need more paulina in a different context than just being abe's girlfriend and lonnie's mom mm -hmm. i yeah, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I think we'll yeah. get there. I think uh, I think the new year is going to bring some good stuff for us. Mm -hmm. I do. I do. Yeah. At least on the storyline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And then last but not least, we have uh, Nicole, EJ, Sammy, and Lucas as Susan is bedridden. Guys. Mm -hmm. Dan Fierigal and Stacey. Oh, Isaac. my gosh. Wow, 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 wow. Mm -hmm. Were those scenes so great. good. So good. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. I can't even say enough good things about this. It's just yeah. what we were saying, you know, what we've always said about Dan since he started. He literally has chemistry with everyone. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they really sold, like, a mother-son moment. And he really sold himself as, like, this guy torn between kind of, you know being a hard ass, you know, towards Sammy, mm -hmm. but then also, you know, you saw his, we see his vulnerable side and he sells both of them like so well. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, those were, those were probably my favorite, my most favorite scenes of the week. Like th those are really, those were like soap scenes, you know? Yeah. And, and it just really, they really sold it and it really, really emitted off screen and, and yeah, very, ca very captivating. And also impactful when you remember like, this is still Stacy, just in a different mm -hmm. role. So, like, you have their sibling. You chemistry. For, I forget. Yeah, you forget. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you, you went from that scene. What was it? A couple weeks ago, where they were in the Demira um, living room and they were mm -hmm. yelling at each other, and then it was like, <laughs> "I got your back," and they were like loving siblings then, and now, you know, their mother and son as Susan and EJ. I yeah, I love those scenes together. I'm glad. I was thinking we haven't. The last time Susan was in town when EJ was, and he was, like, himself, I think that was, I think Eileen came back right before when she play, last played Susan, but I don't know if they had scenes, I'm guessing they had scenes together. Was that the very, last time? They it was a while ago, yeah. Briefly. yeah very, it was very briefly, very yeah. Because Eileen right was before, playing Susan. Um, yeah. Right before James exited. Yeah. Um, 
And like Susan has always been his sort of Achilles heel, but he's also I'm glad that they mentioned he also has had this like differential relationship with her. Like, you know, I'm the refined sort of British one. And he also he does have a little bit of shame when it comes to her. So I'm glad like he acknowledged he was not her. Raised by her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the yeah. other thing is that he he yeah. was raised primarily by Stefano, yeah. especially in his formative years. Yeah. Exactly. So he has a very disjointed relationship yeah. with his mother. Mm -hmm. Um and I, and we, it's such a shame, but I'm glad that we're getting into it now. Yeah. Where we really tackle that, tackle the fact that Stefano was his primary caretaker, so he doesn't really have a mother-son relationship to, com to compare it to. And then you compare that to the kind of what he thinks a mother is. Like, the fact that it didn't occur to him that his mother would give his life, give her yeah. life for him. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something that he only thought of as like a Sammy thing mm -hmm. that like because Sammy's yeah. the one that goes to extremes yeah. when he did. I don't think that it it um, worked itself out in his head that's yeah. a mother thing that's what yeah. a mother does you know yeah, period it doesn't thing. matter how kooky she is how mm -hmm. you know different she is from you that's what a mother does for her child mm -hmm. Yeah, Annette Thompson. Yeah, actually, the the beginning portion of EJ is like he was. I think she's asking, was it EJ in England growing up and not with either parent? No, he was with Susan and Edmund originally, but then when he came back as an adult, it was sort of revealed that at some point he went to sort of live with Stefano and sort of be raised by him. But well, yeah, Stefano was off. Uh, Stefano was off camera for a while. Yeah, so, well, yeah. The idea is he was with Susan and Edmund, of course, when he was younger. And then, mm -hmm. at, like like you said, his formative years, he spent a lot of time with Stefano. And that's where he sort of got influenced by him there. Yeah. So, yeah, he, I mean, he knows Susan, of course, and was somewhat raised by her. But they don't have mm -hmm. the mother-son traditional relationship that you would have. Yeah. Yeah. This also sold me on EJ and Nicole this week. Yeah. Definitely. If I wasn't sold before, I was sold this week. <laughs> I'm liking them better. I wasn't. I'm wasn't the biggest proponent of them. I think their chemistry is like off the charts between mm -hmm. Karen and Ari. Yeah, like, for sure. That's that's what the thing that's been pushing them together for me. And yeah, I like that. There's also a weird, um, interesting like maturity to their relationship that they never had before. They always had the mm -hmm. chemistry. Yeah. They always had the deviousness. But seeing them now as like grown adults and mm -hmm. they're being completely honest with each other, the stuff. You know, the stuff that Nicole has done, she's up front, even sleeping with Rafe. Right. Like, it, everything's on the table with them, and that, mm -hmm. to me, has been, the, like, the deciding factor that's making me um, come around to them more as a couple this time around, mm -hmm. considering their past, but, yeah. There is something well, very it, special about couples that break up, and then they get back together, and there's no BS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's just, yeah. like, Full transparency. On the table. Yeah. I'm actually really loving that now. Yeah. Of course, if we do get EJ and Nicole, probably not going to last long. And why? <laughs> because mm -hmm. Sammy and her lunch tray <laughs> have managed to at least partially escape yeah. from captivity. Finally, so, finally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh we had a lot, of, a lot of finalies this week. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so we still don't know who has Sammy or why. It doesn't even appear that Sammy knows yeah. who or why, uh, but she managed to escape and managed to get a location sent to uh, Lucas <laughs> somehow. Yeah. Yes. I, I love those scenes. This is, you know, it was gracing Allie, of course. Mm -hmm. This is sort of Sammy and like her ingenuity at its best. And I love that they didn't do the, um, they didn't do the usual tropes of like when she had the phone and she like turns her back and then the guard gets up and grabs her. And, yeah, like I, I know I was happy. Like I was waiting yeah. for that guard to get up and catch yeah. her, but I was glad that they kept him knocked out. And when exactly. when she, he started to wrestle, she took the tray and yes. bashed him <laughs> like, again. I was like, okay. I was like, this is yeah. good. All right, I like, like this. this is Sammy sort of like learning. This is what her idiot kidnap, you know, kidnap. Yeah, like, kidnap. Yeah. So. She has she has been the kidnapper. Exactly. She has been yeah. kidnapped. Kidnappy. You know? yeah. She is. The, yeah, the, mm -hmm. she's an old pro at this at yeah. this point. Someone's uh, making fun of the lunch trays this past few months when Julie got beat in the head with a lunch tray. <laughs> that Sammy with the lunch tray. I guys, I'm I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, oh. all the best self-defense teachers will tell oh, you God. that you grab what is near you mm -hmm. and what will do it. They did not put 
that frying pan entangled for yeah. no reason. <laughs> yeah. So have you have you guys now that well not that we didn't really get much info, but are your answers still the same about who you think had Sammy? Kristen. I still think it's Kristen. I think it's Johnny still. I think Johnny did it. Oh really? really? Not, not, I think Johnny did it not for ill intent, not for I think he I think my, my rationale was that Johnny kidnapped her to keep her safe from EJ because Johnny came back. Johnny came back after Sammy got kidnapped. Yeah. Here, here's what I think. After after Sammy got kidnapped. Sammy got kidnapped after it was revealed to EJ that she had cheated and EJ threw her out of the house. The first yeah. time we saw Johnny, he was coming out of the Demira tunnels. And he was like, oh, I decided to make my entrance through the Demira tunnels, which I'm like, okay. that's weird, but okay. Mm -hmm. Now, does he have Sammy in the Demira tunnels? I don't know. We don't know that yet. But well, I think, I, I think, I think Johnny's involved, at least involved somehow in it. I'm assuming she's in like an undisclosed location because I feel like it would have Lucas would have registered that it was like the Demira tunnels. We would have yeah. we, it would have yeah. it would have been revealed to us that she was in yeah. the Demira yeah. tunnels. I I did, I don't know. If interesting she's in the Demira tunnels. I think she's closer than she thinks. Yeah, she is I, to I agree too. Yeah, I don't think she's that far away. She's probably still in Salem, just underground somewhere. Yeah, or right on the outskirts or something. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's got she's got to be close. Yeah, um, and I love that they gave us really good Lucas. movement though with this storyline. It was like it wasn't a back and forth. It wasn't another phone mm -hmm. getting disconnected. Mm -hmm. It was like yeah. Allie to Lucas, Lucas to come find me. <laughs> Lucas gets up with the phone, which I yeah. loved, and like ran out. Yeah, yeah. D this song is gonna sound like a weird question, but how much experience does Lucas have with kidnapping? I know. Part of me was like, "Grab Roman!" Like, wait, grab Roman, and then you guys both go and get yeah. her. Like, he doesn't. He attempted to kidnap Will once, but okay. it didn't work out that way. He got yeah, like usual. he tried to kidnap Will, but Kate yeah. had set the house on fire, and he had oh, no. remember that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then he just has a lot of yes. experience with Salem. usual Salem experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Proximity to danger. Yeah. Whether he was involved. I was oh, very impressed yeah. that he was just very even keel. He was yeah. like he, he was to both Sammy to Allie. Don't panic, everybody. Yeah. Calm down. We have to just get this done right mm -hmm. now. He was mm -hmm. very even keel. I was very mm -hmm. impressed. Yeah. You kind of got me. Th well, I'm still sticking with Kristen, but that's an interesting theory, Michael. Just the way everything lined up. You know, mm -hmm. in, in terms of how we saw it. And then the thing about him coming out of the tunnel. Yeah. I'm like, no, I need a better explanation uh -huh. than, than that. No, people don't enter. No, sorry, maybe don't buy a, it. a johnny Sydney combo there. Maybe, yeah. Uh, huh. Maybe. Yeah, see. we'll see. Well, that was, uh, it, 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 that was just a good week of content with those, yeah. this, those people, this storyline. I'm very happy to see where that goes uh, going into the holidays. Yeah. Sammy's out, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Ready or not, She's here she comes. Hurricane Sammy's oh, been released. To Salem, yes. Yeah. <laughs> here she comes. Hmm. All right. Uh, and now it is time for our segment. Now that we recapped our last week of Days of Our Lives. Yes. So uh, Tony is not here. So we will be going to Michael's segment. Hmm. Caption that. Mm -hmm. All right. This week's caption that photo comes courtesy of Chloe and Brady outside of the pub with Chloe's to go and this week's caption goes to there it is Heidi Ann 69 on Instagram with her caption uh are my balls in your bag <laughs> wow guys that was the first caption I read it made me laugh out loud yeah. and I was like done oh thank you God, Heidi yeah. Ann 69 for making That's my job one. A hell of a lot easier this week. That's a perfect one. Yeah. And that was this week's caption that. Right. And now we are moving Oops. on to Justin's segment, which was okay. Let's see if I still have my one capacity here. Right. <laughs> Those were the days. Yay. Okay, nice. <laughs> This week's segment, guys, I am taking you back to December 3rd, 1984, where Carrie tells Anna that she has decided to stay with Marlena and um, live with her and the twins, Sammy and Eric. 
I picked this one because it sort of ties into the story um, Abe was telling when Roman was first um, sort of killed in quotation marks and he was away. And then, um, yeah, Carrie, at this point, this was sort of like Carrie's life. She was in between either Tony and Anna or Roman and Marlena. And yeah, she sort of made this that she wanted to say, which ironically sort of sets up the next storyline where Roman or John comes back as Roman and then Marlena gets killed for eight years or so. And then for those five, you know, five to eight years, it's actually John and Carrie mm-hmm. and Sammy and Eric who are sort of the family unit on the show. And that's a lot of times for those who don't, that's why John always sort of considers Carrie his daughter and his firstborn and stuff. He has a really sort of strong relationship with her. So yeah, I saw that and with the story Abe was telling. And and then we have um, Little Miss Andrea Barber, who was, I think, the original Carrie <laughs> back then. Nobody AKA told me Kimmy this. Kimmy Gimbler. Kimmy yes, Gimbler Kimmy Gimbler. Yeah. The very first this. Carrie. Yeah, she was the original Kimmy Carrie. Oh yeah. So I saw this one and I was like, oh, it ties in perfectly. And ironically, when I was doing research, I found out when they bring Christy Clark back, who, of course, is like Christy, but they bring the character, the character of Carrie back a lot at November sweeps. So, like, through all the history, like, I was searching, it was like, Carrie comes back, you know, 1996. Carrie comes back 1999. Carrie, and it was all like this week too. So it's oh. inter- yeah, the, like the end oh. of November, beginning of December. There's like a history of like always bringing her back, or whether she's on the show for like a quick visit, or she's mm-hmm. on they're bringing her back to the show, sort of for a few months or a couple of years or whatever. So yeah, I thought that oh, was interesting. The thing, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was those were the days, um, December third, nineteen eighty four. Can we look at and, that updo? Look at that hairdo. Is Leanne not gorgeous? Like Leanne is so stunning. Like I want. I mean, she's gorgeous want, now, but look back then. Like she's amazing. From the clips I've seen from like eighties days of our yeah. lives, like this is how people dress like yeah. on the daily mm-hmm. on these shows. I want that yeah. b- brought back. I yeah. want <laughs> what, what 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 abundance to the max. Yeah. <laughs> Just for a little while. Yeah, but yeah, Leanne is yeah strikingly gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those were the days. That giant glass. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for my segment, It's a Gift. And this week's It's a Gift goes to Sammy Brady. There and she goes. Her tray. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> what does Emerald say? Wait for it. Bam! Bam. And. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of people people could wield that tray, but I really just think Sammy yeah. has a certain flair to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. She's got. She's there was got some. There was some. There was some. Uh, what do you call it? Rage in that in that uh, tray yeah. flow, throw, whatever you want to call I'm it. Getting this out is and like you can't three stop months, me. Exactly three months of this. Yeah. <laughs> Someone asked actually, uh, and that actually, Leanne has been on the show. Um, if you look back in the archive, she came with Teo. Um, I think one time she's only been Leanne. On the show once, she came with Teo and did like a joint mm-hmm. interview in studio. Um, mm-hmm. You guys were after Buzz, so yeah, check that out. And that she was, yeah, it's a really she's good. Been on since like eighty two, like yeah. she started like early eighties. Yeah. yeah. If you don't know her and Teo are really still like good friends, and mm-hmm. they're always like, if you go to their Instagrams, they're always hanging out, having dinner together, mm-hmm. hanging out after work, and so yeah, they're they're it's a really sweet relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And that right. was this week's It's a Gift. All right. And now it's time for some news and gossip, guys. And we're yeah. going to start with a big one. <laughs> and we are starting with, we have a little bit, some updates about A Very Salem Christmas, the um, Salem Christmas movie. Again, premieres December 16th. It'll stream on Peacock. I'm guessing it'll drop late early wee hours in the morning we're assuming (laughs) um but just a little recap this one is going to chronicle will's um sort of him uh crafting some sort of christmas story a screenplay and his race to sort of meet the deadline in the various salemites friends and family who are featured in the story we're still not sure if this is going to be like a um I what do you want call it? It's sweater. a wonderful life thing, or if it's going to be like a Will imagines what Salem mm-hmm. would be like, where different characters are different personalities or whatever. We'll see. But again, we have um, 
they made a few announcements. Basically, ninety oh, yeah. percent of the cast of Dish of Days of Our Lives is in this movie. It's not it's not a small cast, so I think mm-hmm. it'd be interesting what take they um they take on it. Um, but yeah, we are seeing um, Zach Tinker is back as Sonny. We saw him and Will together. We saw John uh, Drake Hogeson is in it. We saw Miss <laughs> Allison's yeah looking yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, I Allison want Sammy's sweater. I know the Brady Pub sweater. Yeah. Christmas sweater. It's actually a Christmas sweater with the Brady Pub apron over it. Oh, is that what the Oh, okay. Oh, oh that okay. I see it now. Yeah. Was it we yeah, so we, we got an idea of a new design for yeah. <laughs> for our merch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love and then it. we saw Jack A. Harry as Paulina at the end sporting a Cruella de Vil yeah, so I we'll feel see. like she's a she'd be a, she's probably a narrator. I'm guessing or from so, that. Oh, is that like a Mrs. Claus streak? And then yeah, maybe okay. something. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. So we so will much. find it premieres. That's next, not next week, but the December sixteenth. Um, yeah, so it's coming up. I don't yeah. have my calendar up. Hang yeah, on. it's next. Okay. It's not this week coming. It's the following week. Next Thursday. Yes. Thursday, December sixteenth. Yeah. On TikTok. Yeah. So check that out. Um, moving right along in the Christmas theme, we had the holiday Christmas parade last week. Um, holiday Christmas parade um, is a charity. It features uh, U.S. Marines uh, Toys for Tots initiative. It will air as actually a two-hour event on Friday, December 17th on the CW. And we have one of the photographers there that day, Mr. Michael Mattis. And you are actually seeing his photographs here. Michael, you want to take over and talk a little bit about Oh, I have to talk. Sure. Oh, okay. No, it's just it's just a, a a a fun little parade in downtown Hollywood that they've been doing for like, I want to say close to a hundred years, not quite a hundred years, eighty something years. Um, and yeah, it's it's you know, celebrities from from TV and film, um, come and you know, there's a Toys for Tots um charity component to it and it's just a fun way to cap off the thanksgiving day weekend and um yeah deidre hall was there judy yeah, evans, evans uh patrika darbo ian buchanan and then marilyn mccoo excuse me marilyn mccoo and um ah, yes uh, her husband uh, uh billy um, billy oh, yeah yes billy were, were also there so lots of lots of daytime representation there are some people from general mm-hmm. hospital bold and the beautiful yeah um yeah it's just a just a fun 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 event um mm-hmm. and yeah they just parade down the hollywood uh boulevard and um yeah and it was nice weather for it this year the yeah. two years ago it was freezing but mm-hmm. this year it was nice so yeah yeah so pictures courtesy of michael mattis yay, yay. <laughs> Moving right along, we had a little bit of a gender reveal from one of our friends of the show, Miss Jen Lilly. Um, we talked about this maybe about six weeks ago, how her pregnancy, and um, she was featured in People and gave this really interesting story about finding out she was pregnant. Um, if you haven't heard it, go um, go to People and uh, check out that story. It's really interesting. She was overseas and there was a language barrier. And yeah, just go check it out. <laughs> it was interesting. But yes, her and her husband, yes. let me make sure I got it. Jason Wayne, I believe his name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They are expecting a baby girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. with this girl, this girl, it'll bring to it'll bring it to baby number four for her, four kid. Yeah. Two of the oldest kids are boys and two youngest, yeah, are girls. So yeah, big congrats yeah. to Jen and Jason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think she's due soon. I think the beginning of the new year. Um, yeah, we may see. Yeah. Nice. New baby Lily. Yeah. yeah. Love it, Moving love it, love forward, it. last but not least, of course, we have a reminder on Spectrum Celebrity Events slash Edition Days. Um, what uh, collaboration we have uh, taking place Saturday, March fifth. We have the Salem Proud meet and greet. We have <laughs> the Brock Kelly, Mike Manning, Zach Tinker, Lindsay Godfrey, and Christopher Sean. They'll take place again on the fifth. 9 a.m. to 1 30 p.m. and then we have later that day we have our septennial dinner for edition days those in attendance brock kelly nadia bjorlin eric martzoff stacy Haido, paul telfer lindsey godfrey billy flynn and brendan coughlin um again saturday march 5th 5 p.m to 9 p.m all tickets two years in the main two years in the making right trying to do <laughs> this spectrum celebrity oh, events.com and yeah stay tuned for more omicron or whatever it's called better not f this up we need to have this we need to have this thing finally 
<laughs> yeah, um, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, we'll have some more um, announcements to make on that weekend coming up. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Guys, we'll be there live and in person. Mm -hmm. So you want to yeah. get these tickets early. You can yeah. see my lumberjack shirt in person. Yeah. <laughs> if it's still, if it's still, actually, this is a different one, but you know, <laughs> if the OG one's still around, I might have uh -huh. to just wear it. Yay. Nice. All right. Okay. And cool. that was yep. your news and gossip, guys. And now we are going to get a sneak peek at what's coming up next week. On Days of Our Lives. It's that time of year when everybody's dancing. Tis the season <laughs> to give and give and give. Really? Yeah. <laughs> this is what, version 10 or 12 of them slapping oh, each man. other and fighting? Yeah. yeah. Classic. Yeah. And I just love the juxtaposition of what was going on yeah. with the, the holiday music behind yeah, right. it. Yeah, is that Michael yeah. Buble? It sounds like Michael so, Buble. Yeah, I was like, did they actually license some music for this? I was yeah. gonna oh, yeah. ask, like, that's so It sounded like Or maybe it. since it's only it. maybe it was just under the amount where yeah, they right. yeah. of course <laughs> if that was it. they would be using music all the time, but maybe yeah. or maybe it was, you know that's some heavy NBC already had it licensed or something. But yeah, that did sound like if it wasn't Michael Buble, it was a um, if it wasn't Michael Bublé, it was def didn't sounded like him. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's having a special this week, so who knows? Yeah, okay. yeah. we're getting Sammy in full force now. Yeah, <laughs> no surprise. Yeah, I know. I'm glad it's not take. I'm glad it's not gonna apparently take her long to get back to uh, yeah, right. to yeah. Salem. Do you guys remember when Kate was coming back to Salem? It took like a that month was, of yeah. air shows. That was a from the time she escaped the boat yeah. and all that she had to go through. It was like the <laughs> longest journey back to salem that in history she started in january and she got back to salem right. in like march <laughs> lauren coslow worked with As all of these day players for like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, all right yeah. good yeah. stuff that, yeah yes guys we made it all right and that was we made your it. <laughs> week of days of our lives yeah, well, most of it, most of it was good. It was only that one that was just like, ugh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, that was your week of Dish and Days. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope we brightened your Sunday a little bit. The sun is now going down outside mm, my window. I know. It is, it is sunset day. time. So yeah. Fast. Why is sunset at four <laughs> thirty? Uh, yeah. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm Rosselli. Follow me on Twitter at Tia three two three Rosselli. Where can we find Justin? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Justin Lee Harold. And where can we find Michael Mattis? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at ML Mattis. Yay! All right, follow us on all social media platforms. Dish and Day Show on Facebook, Add Dish and Days on Instagram, and underscore Dish and Days on Twitter. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And mm -hmm. please buy our merch. Best <laughs> Christmas present to your Dish and Days family. <laughs> Guys, just tell your husbands, tell your boyfriends. You know, it's like, hint, hint. You know, you, know, you, don't, mm -hmm. you don't need to surprise me with anything. This is what I want. Just put the put make it right easy. in front of them. Yes, make <laughs> it easy. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I'm so Bye, glad to be back. We will see you next week for an next week. episode. Yes. We will be here next week. There yeah, was talk in the chat room of when we're taking our hiatus. Not no, quite no, no, yet. No, no. We'll be here next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah we'll be no, here. No, we'll know. Well, that's is why we say follow us on our social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Follow us on Twitter. All right. We'll so tell you when you we're know. not going to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we'll let you know. Don't worry. Yeah, we will we be no here next week. We have no problem telling. <laughs> yeah, we have no problem. Yeah, we ain't doing it this week. No. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, we're here for a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay. All right. See you next week, guys. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, guys.